another video and today what I want to do is uh, go over some wiring schematics. <coughs> I want to uh, kind of show you um, how I read wiring schematics looking through it. Uh, it'll help you to better understand how so anyway, uh, let's let's get into a, a wiring schematic here and see what we can. Uh, so I punched an HVAC wiring schematic. Uh, I'm just going to scroll over here. This one it looks pretty basic. Uh, something that you might see out on the field. So we got a split AC air conditioner outdoor section. See and notice it says three phase. Okay, this is a three phase system. So you have L1, L2, and L3. Uh, L1, 2, and 3 come in from the disconnect. And again, this is the outdoor section of the air conditioner. So we're talking about the condenser fan, the, the compressor, uh, whatever other controls might be in there. So let's run through this. Okay, so, so looking right here, uh, we see the outdoor fan motor. Okay, so... Again, this is a 208-233 phase system, and right here you see the compressor, and the compressor has T1, T2, and T3 on it. So all three legs are being used to power the compressor. But if you notice, on the condenser fan motor, only L1 and L2 is used to power the fan motor in this particular case. Also, you'll notice that what they did here is they used L2 and L3. This is a crankcase heater that uh, it's either an insertion style into the compressor or it is a uh, a strap on or a wrap around uh, straps to the bottom uh, base of the canister of the, of the uh, air conditioner of the, of the excuse me of the compressor. Um, so moving down here a little further you see that it also powers a transformer so basically that's it this is everything in the high voltage side of that system this is pretty simple um, we got the transformer here the transformer is is going to uh, transform that power down to a more than likely a 24 volt cycle or 24 volt uh, uh, control voltage so you see See here it comes off this side and we have R. Uh, let's read read here and see what it says. <clears throat> Isolated T-stat contact. Okay, so this would be your call for cooling. Um, it may be a uh, um, whatever that call is. It could be uh, connected to some other controller or an energy management system or in this most simplest case, a thermostat. So as it sends a signal down the Y terminal, it <clears throat> comes into um, ASCT. Let's see, not real sure what ASCT is. Let's come over here and see. Oh, anti-short cycling timer, okay. So, so the ACT here is... Um, it powers a countdown module basically and uh, that is a load so R powers it common on the other side so this is a completed circuit so as soon as R, R makes to W or to Y it comes in powers this and starts counting down typically five minutes that way your uh, compressor doesn't come right on in the event of somebody playing with the thermostat or a power outage or something like that. So after the five minutes, this contact sends power through high pressure switch. And I want to talk about pressure switches here for a second. Notice that this has like a dome on it. And it <clears throat> is pushing up. If you can imagine that this is pressure below and it's pushing on this right here, then when the pressure rises, it's going to open that switch. Okay, So the high pressure switch is normally closed, but will open in the event of the pressure going higher than whatever the switch is rated at. 
low pressure switch is also set up so that <coughs> the switch is normally closed but if the pressure is pushing against it you see this pressure a, a given pressure is pushing it, they're keeping it closed however if the pressure drops so will the switch the drop the switch will drop and open that switch okay so cooling contactor and that contactor is represented back at the top for L1, 2, and 3 right here it breaks that. So call for cooling sends it down Y through the countdown timer switch makes so long as it's high and low pressure switches are uh, closed then the contactor will make and then boom all these close up here. Now <clears throat> Let's see here. Uh, common. Okay, so the common goes back to whatever control uh, you're using here. Um, let's see, is there anything we can add here? Yeah, typically a high pressure switch is a manual reset. Typically. Okay, they're uh, um, usually a typical manual reset. Okay, so this is, this is a ladder. Okay, so let's come over here to this wiring schematic. Take a look. It's the same thing. It's just drawn out different. All right. So let's start with our three-phase power coming in, and that is located right here. It comes in. Note that we have a ground. Okay, this is a ground symbol right here. So L1, 2, and 3 are coming in, and they're waiting at the contactor. And that contactor is the same here and here. It's the same thing. Alright, so that power is sitting there waiting to do its thing. But notice on this side of the contactor, uh, we got wires going off and doing stuff. So let's see what's going. So we got L1 coming over here and feeding one side of the transformer. And you got L3 coming over here and feeding one side of the transformer. So here to here, you should have 120 volts, or excuse me, uh, you should have uh, 208, 230, whatever uh, that <coughs> uh, voltage is. Um, secondary side is going to be 4 volts, typically. I'm not saying all the time. Sometimes it uh, uh, drops it down to 120 volts because there might be uh, a lot more going on than just what we're seeing here. But typically 24 volts. All right. Uh, we're only going to deal with the high voltage side at the moment. Let's get back over here and see where L2 and L3 are going. L2 heads on over to the crankcase heater. L3 also heads over to the crankcase heater. And you notice here we got we got wires that are labeled colors, which is cool. That helps us out quite a bit. You come over here and you notice the same thing. You got L2 and L3. The more coming over to the crankcase heater but nothing's labeled okay so this is kind of this is nice to look at to get an overview of what's going you have in the system and this is nice when you need to trace down the wires and in some cases uh, they these will be everywhere there's a junction or a change there will be numbers uh, because in some of the older systems and the larger systems all the wires are black so this this wouldn't fly, wouldn't work. All right, so that's the only thing going on on the uh, line voltage side of this. There is power on the other side of the contactor, and as soon as all this low voltage makes and calls for cooling, and so long as all the switches are made, these switches close. They're normally open now, and boom, they will close. And then that sends power to T1, there we go, comes to T2, and it also sends power to the common on the fan motor, and it also sends power down on the uh, run on the fan, and through the capacitor, um, that will get the thing going through jump start now this also 
a nice little symbol right here. This is a thermal overload on the condenser fan motor, okay? There's it they didn't draw it in here, but the winding in here too and there's a thermal overload inside of here but that's a, a good representation of a thermal overload and then here capacitor all right so let's do the low voltage side here real quick low voltage side comes out red goes up to our thermostat or whatever control we're using comes back down in the y terminal and then again it powers this anti short cycling timer and counts down and when it counts down that five minutes a typical five minutes then it will make that switch the switch goes up through the other pressure switches just like before and boom hits the contactor coil and it closes completes the circuit and your air conditioner is off and running okay well this was the first a video that I'm putting out um, I do wish that this application would allow me to turn the phone sideways so that I can get a good uh, wide screen shot at these but uh, maybe I can get that to happen in the future uh, if you like this type of video don't forget to uh, like and subscribe down below uh, and for you uh, my regular subscribers that are looking for these types of videos please let me know if this helps you out I can do a ton of this type of video uh, if, if this helps you so please let me know make a comment down below um, I'm sure a lot of you will see this within the next little bit here um, I, like I said I can do a ton of these videos and I can walk through all this stuff and I can run through many different scenarios and and help you out uh, with wiring schematics so all right, well, thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you all on the next video.